Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor. This is a sandhill crane that I got photos of from Kensington Metro Park um, in Brighton, Michigan. There are a couple there that were super habituated to people, so you could get within feet of them, you know, two, three feet, which was great because you could get great detail shots of their heads to paint from. So this one was a really straightforward painting. I was trying to get a painting done and I didn't have a very complicated sketch to work from, but I was just desperate to put some paint on the paper, so I chose this simple subject. Um, I started by really wetting the, the paper and had the frisketed off head of the bird, and you can see me going over with multiple passes of water. Sometimes the paper doesn't absorb it super evenly at first, so if you give it a few passes, you're more likely to get a smooth wash. So once it was well saturated, I went through and uh, put down two washes of this blue and blotted it off where it was kind of collecting and peeled off the frisket. And then I transferred the rest of the bird's head. At this point, I dropped in the lightest local colors. Um, most of this was done with the number six round. And again, this was, uh, usually I try to have a little bit more elaborate backgrounds, but uh, I was just in the mood to get some painting done. So uh, I did this one, which just was a, a bird portrait. Kind of a very straightforward painting. But it was fun. So here I'm starting to glaze in the second passes of color to build up some depth. And uh, I think at this point I'd switched over to a number two brush to do the uh, smaller detail feathering of the, uh, the bird. And you can see I'm using the butcher's tray to mix colors. I used some of that background blue that I had used before to get some of the grays of the bird and some of the fill color for the shadows. Um, and then I also used some of those same beak colors and bringing a little bit of yellowy kind of colors to the uh, whites of the bird to build some form. So in the end, it would still read as white, even though it has some of these other colors in it that might be reflected from its environment. And relative to most of the other paintings I've been working on, this was a real quickie. This one went by very very rapidly. And you can see my reference on the left. Um, when I got the photos of this at the Metro Park, it was against some green kind of blurry background. And uh, it made for a great photo, but I thought it might be fun to do this instead of on the green to kind of have a blue skyish or maybe a blurred out water background that you could imagine it on instead of using all those greens. Um, and I thought it would play a little bit better with the grays of the neck and the back of the head, and then the reds would pop out nicely still against that, uh, as opposed to just going with the greens. I thought it'd have a little bit better contrast. Here I switched to a 10 watt brush, just for doing a lot of the tiny little details, and back to the number two. There's a lot of beak on this one to paint. And the, the beaks are kind of neat because they, they have parts that are just like horn. And then as you get closer to the nostrils and back toward the face of the bird, um, it's very fleshy in that part. And then it slowly transitions to these hairy, feathery parts. I shouldn't say hairy, but the hair-like feathers that move up and around the uh, red part of the bird's face, which has these tiny little blackish red hairs all over it which was uh, fun to render because you had to do the red first and then bring in those darks uh, later. So you had to plan a little bit ahead to control your contrast. And you can see from the palette that the as I go, I start with very wet washes, and they're uh, a little bit larger. And uh, as I go, the, I start mixing those a little bit more opaque and darker. And 
And to render those reds of the face, I started with some uh, kind of orangey colors moving to cadmium reds and then in the shadow areas bringing in some alizarins and even some purples to kind of round it out and have some uh, interesting saturated color as well. They're beautiful birds. You always see them from a distance, at least I always see them from a distance, and to get that close to one up you know, right in front of your face was a neat experience where you could just stare into that beautiful yellowy eye and that the red of the head was so pronounced from a distance you don't even really notice that all that much. So it uh, was a striking experience that I wanted to kind of maybe want to paint it. As I rounded out the beak, I started bringing in a little bit of those red colors just to, in the darker areas. Not that it's really red, but that kind of brought in some of that reddish feel to the orange. At this point, it was time for a signature and I called it finished. So there it is, a Sandhill Crane 10 by 7 inch transparent color. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or visit the website or leave a comment.